Welcome back ladies and gents. In this particular teaching video, I'll be looking at 5.2 inclined planes. 5.2 represents chapter 5, section 2 of the Pearson A-Level Mass Applied Mass Year 2 textbook. I'm going to start off with a smooth inclined plane. So we have a smooth inclined plane. So here is my smooth inclined plane. Suppose the angle to the horizontal is theta. Here is the particle on the plane. Suppose the mass of the particle is m, hence the weight will be mg, acting vertically downwards. Now this weight has component forces. We can form a right angle triangle. This component over here is perpendicular to the plane. This component over here is parallel to the plane. The angle of here is 90 degrees. It can be shown that this angle is theta. Now, because this weight is acting vertically downwards, the arrow for this particular component will be in this direction, and the arrow for this particular component will be in this direction. Right, so what is this component force? Well, if you look at the right angle triangle, this here represents the adjacent, so the adjacent is always of the form cosine. So in particular, it will be mg cos theta. This component over here represents the opposite, and the opposite is always of the form sine. So in particular, this will be mg sine theta. Now the other force acting on this particle is the normal reaction. The normal reaction is perpendicular to the contact surface. You can call that normal reaction R. This particle is held at rest. If I let go, it will accelerate down the plane. And so that acceleration, we can call it a meters per second per second. Now, because the inclined plane is smooth, there is no friction present. Okay, so we won't be labeling the friction. The plane is smooth. Right, let's move on to a rough inclined plane. So here is my inclined plane. Uh, suppose the angle to the horizontal is theta. Here is the particle. Suppose the mass of the particle is m. Hence the weight will be mg acting vertically downwards. Again, this particular weight will have component forces as shown over here. It will also have a normal reaction force, which is perpendicular to the contact surface. Now, if I hold on to the particle and then I let it go, it will accelerate down the plane. So the acceleration, we can label it as a meters per second per second. Now, this inclined plane is rough. And because it's rough, there will be friction present. Friction opposes motion. So if the motion is down the plane, friction will act up the plane. We can label that friction as F, acting up the plane. So that there completes smooth inclined plane and rough inclined plane representation. Now, ladies and gents, I'm going to be going through some important notation. Let's start off with the first one. This notation means resolving perpendicular to the plane taking the upwards direction to be the positive direction okay so that is your first notation the next one is this notation over here so this means resolving parallel to the plane, taking this direction to be the positive direction. Okay, so we're going to be resolving using Newton's second law. And Newton's second law states that the force 
F, which is the resultant force, is equal to the mass of the particle multiplied by the acceleration. Okay, so that is Newton's second law. These are the important facts for this particular section. Now I'm going to be going through two exam style questions. Here is exam style question one. A force of 30 newtons acts horizontally on a particle of mass 5 kg that rests on a smooth slope that is inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal, as shown in the diagram. Find the acceleration of the particle. First of all, we're going to label all the forces acting on this particular particle. We've got the weight acting vertically downwards, and that weight will be the mass, which is 5, and multiplied by g, acceleration due to gravity. So it'll be 5g. Now this uh, weight has component forces. We can label the component forces. This is the component, which is perpendicular to the plane, and this is the component, which is parallel to the plane. We have a 90 degree angle here, and it can be shown that this angle is 30 degrees. We can put in the arrows. Make sure you put the arrows in the correct direction. This one represents the adjacent, so it would just be 5g cos 30 degrees. This one here is the opposite, hence it will be 5g sine 30 degrees. This particle also has a normal reaction, which is perpendicular to the contact surface. We can call that normal reaction R. Now, over here we have a very important angle from GCSE. We have alternate angles, Z shape. So this angle here is 30 degrees. Alternate angles are equal. We have a force 30 newtons going into the particle horizontally. What we need to do is label the component forces for that particular 30 newtons. We can form a right angle triangle, drop a perpendicular to the plane. So here's your perpendicular. Because the arrow is in this direction, for this component, we have the arrow going downwards. And for this component, we have the arrow going up the plane. So let's label the component forces. This represents the opposite. So the force will be of the form 30 sine 30 degrees. This one over here represents adjacent. So the force will be of the form 30 cos 30 degrees. Okay, now in the question, we are not told if the particle is going to move up or down the plane. We need to decide in what direction the particle moves. Well, let's have a look at the forces which are parallel to the slope. We've got the 30 cos 30 degrees. Okay, so we've got 30 cos 30 degrees, which is equal to 15 root 3. Okay, and we also have the 5g sine 30. Which is going to equal 24.5. Okay, now the 15 root 3, if I put this into my calculator, it is equal to 25.98 dot dot dot. Okay, so that force there is actually greater than that force there. So that force up the plane is greater than the force down the plane, hence the particle will accelerate up the plane. And we can, we can actually label that acceleration as 8 meters per second per second acting up the plane. Now, our target is to work out A. So to work out A, we're going to be resolving parallel to the plane in the direction of the acceleration, which is up the plane. We're going to resolve using Newton's second law, F equal ma. So let's calculate the resultant force acting parallel to the plane on this particular particle. So we've got the 30 cos 30 degrees. take away the 5g sine 30 degrees. So that is my resultant force F. The mass of the particle, as you know, is 5 multiplied by the acceleration, which is A. Now we can rearrange to make A the subject. So A is equal 30 cos 30 degrees minus 5g sine 30 degrees all over 5. 
Okay, so I can put this into my calculator and to make sure my calculator is on degree mode. So if I put this into my calculator, I end up with acceleration equals 0 0.296 meters per second per second to three significant figures. And that there, ladies and gents, completes the question. Here is exam style question two. A particle of mass mkg is pulled up a rough slope by a force of 26 newtons that acts at an angle 45 degrees to the slope. The particle experiences a constant frictional force of magnitude 12 newtons. Given that tan alpha is equal to 1 over square root 3 and that the acceleration of the particle is 1 meters per second per second, show that the mass m is given by 1.08 to 3 significant figures. Right, first of all, we're going to label all the forces acting on this particular particle. We have the weight acting vertically downwards. So that weight will just be mg, where g is the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, we have component forces for this weight. This force is perpendicular to the plane, and this force over here is parallel to the plane. It can be shown that this angle is also alpha. Okay, so let's label the component forces. This over here represents the adjacent, so it will be of the form mg cos alpha. This one over here represents the opposite, so it will be of the form mg sine alpha. We also have the normal reaction acting perpendicular to the contact surface. Over here, the 26 newtons is at an angle of 45 degrees to the slope. So what we want to do is label the component forces. We can drop a perpendicular over here. Okay, so because the arrow is acting in this direction, over here the arrow will be in this direction, and over here the arrow will be in this direction. This represents the adjacent, so the component force over here will be of the form 26 cos 45 degrees, this represents the opposite, so the component force will be of the form 26 sine 45 degrees. Okay, now we've got the frictional force, which is 12 newtons. It says in the question that the particle is actually being pulled up the rough slope, so the acceleration is acting up the slope, and that acceleration is given in the question one meters per second per second. Okay, so we've got all the forces labeled and now we can actually proceed with our solution. What we want to do is show that the mass is 1.08 to three significant figures. We don't know what alpha is, but what we do know is that tan alpha is equal to one over square root three. Okay, which is opposite over adjacent. We can form a right angle triangle. So the opposite is 1, and the adjacent is square root 3. By Pythagoras' theorem, it can be shown that the hypotenuse is 2. So from that right angle triangle, we can calculate sine alpha. Remember, sine alpha is opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, it will be 1 over 2. We can also calculate cos alpha, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent is square root 3 over the hypotenuse, which is 2. Okay, this is very important. We're going to be using this in our solution. Right, so now we want to calculate the mass. We're going to be resolving parallel to the plane. Okay, so we're going to be resolving parallel to the plane in the direction of the acceleration, which is up the plane. Using Newton's second law, F equal ma. So F there represents the resultant force. Let's calculate the resultant force. It will be 26 cos 45 degrees. Take away mg sine alpha. Take away 12. So that is my resultant force F. This must equal the mass of the particle, which is m, multiplied by the acceleration, which is 1 m times 1 is just m. Okay, right. We're going to simplify this. 
26 cos 45 degrees is 13 root 2 minus the sine alpha you can replace it with 1 over 2 so mg times 1 over 2 is just mg over 2 minus the 12 is equal m so what we want to do now is make m the subject we can collect the m's So we have m plus mg over 2. Alright, so over here we have a common factor of m, so we can take out that common factor. And so inside the bracket we will have 1 plus g over 2. And on the left hand side we've got 13 root 2 minus 12. Okay, so now we can calculate m. Therefore m is equal, this over here, 13 root 2 minus 12, divide by 1 plus g over 2. Now remember, g is the acceleration due to gravity. We know that g is equal to 9.8. So if we substitute g equal 9.8, and we put this whole thing into our calculator, we end up with m equal precisely 1.08 to three significant figures. Okay? And that there is our solution. Now, if you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe.